Hello. Hi, Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. My pleasure to be with you. I have a special show today. It's special to me in my heart. And I think by the time we're done, you're going to see why it, it's a special offering to you as well. Something that can ostensibly help you or anybody you know who's going through a tough time. It's interesting because I think I was, uh, last week was Dr. Sue Mortar, and we ended up having a conversation. She was actually giving some amazing exercises to help people to get through a difficult time. And it was actually very potent exercises. And the one thing we, she and I both wrapped up with is, you know, into everyone's life, something, something's gonna happen or a bunch of things are gonna happen. A tree's gonna fall on a house, people are gonna lose money. Look, California fires recently, we just uh, lost our radio station, it burned. And, and I'm just gonna mute all the people who are here. And if you would all mute yourselves, that would be great because I hear lots of stuff and I want the audience, Jenna, maybe if you can mute yourself, here, I'll mute you, uh, et cetera. And Kim as well, I'll mute you, fantastic. So you can all unmute yourselves when I'm ready to bring you in. But you see these beautiful faces, they as well have been through something in their life and they were brave enough to step up to the plate when they heard the call for an anthology book called I Am Still Here, Trials Turned Into Transformation. And they were willing to pull back the curtain and tell the story about a time in their life that was probably quite excruciating and they weren't sure they were going to get through or the person they wrote about was going to get through. And yet somehow, like all of us, one step at a time through the dark night of a soul, made it through to the other side. I'm guessing, and I'd like to find out from them a little bit later, that one of the questions I have is how did your life change positively like what's different because you had to go through that so that'll be very interesting and I hope you'll find a lot of inspiration in today's show that's what it's here for and that's what it's intended for so here's Here's something I want to offer to you too. This is such an, a great time for entrepreneurs. A lot of people who are doing their work out in the world love what they do and obviously make the money the way they do. But also, as we all know, bing, bing, passive income is everything. And most entrepreneurs already have products or books or programs. And isn't it wonderful to have a platform where you can put them and it's not on your website? <laughs> I actually love that. There is a platform I want to tell you about and they're sponsoring this show. And yes, it's because they're sponsors, but I have to tell you, I'm on the platform. I'm so grateful I found them because their platform's super easy. And it is the way for entrepreneurs, business people, healers, speakers, authors to get their work out there and make it super easy and deliver an online course. You can market, you can create, you can sell on their space. They are called Thinkific. And if you want to create a sustainable business, that's the way to go. You can get discounted prices now only through this show, through Dare to Dream podcast and video. I highly recommend you go there and check them out. It's all in one platform. Again, create, market, sell your own online courses. And they have various plans, uh, discounts only through this this URL, which is thnk.cc slash deb. So thnk.cc slash deb. And there's a lifetime support that comes with everything, even their basic plan. So I'm a big believer, check them out. Who am I? I'm a media visibility expert out into the world, and I help people to create a fierce and unique presence through coaching to write their own book, through getting their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and learning how to get scheduled on media interviews. I'm a certified coach, and I help clients stop living in the shadows so they stand out and fulfill their purpose. This is now year 11 and a half, so I don't even say podcast number blah, 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 because my, my brain and math, not never the twain shall meet. So you can figure it out, but we're still going really strong, and I'm so grateful you guys still follow and listen, engage, and email, and I love hearing from you. By the way, if this show is meaningful, leave a five-star review, right? Leave a five-star review, why? Because when you subscribe to the show, 
And when you leave a review, what you're doing is basically opening the door for other like-minded people in our community, our tribe, globally and otherwise, who are searching for material like this. So it's a really easy way for somebody to find out, ah, there's a show called Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger and look at the guest she has, I'm in. And it comes right into your inbox. How does it get any better than that? I have contributed to 13 anthologies. I've been producing anthologies. I've written three international best-selling books myself, and I've been interviewed on over 900 media outlets. I help you receive a visibility strategy session. So it's a personalized plan, and you stop being the best kept secret, and instead learn to become the visible go-to expert in your tribe, in your field. If you would like to register for a visibility strategy session, just email dare to dream radio at gmail.com and stop your business from living under a rock so you can rock your business out in media today. As promised, I have some amazing people here who I've grown to feel very fond of through the course of our creating together. And although we have 13 amazing authors in the anthology book, uh, what we have today is a representative. They came here to represent today. So they're an incredible wellspring. These authors for readers who may be facing some life challenges and are looking for a source of inspiration, support, and encouragement. The book, on Amazon, ebook and print book is called I Am Still Here, Trials Turned Into Transformation. It is an international bestseller and it is available on Amazon. And I'm gonna welcome the authors all to Dare to Dream and you can go ahead and unmute your beautiful selves. And I'm, I'm also, I'm co-unmuting, I'm co, co clearing you. <laughs> so anyway, folks, uh, well, first, I just want to welcome you to Dare to Dream, and uh, thanks for being here. Just say hi to everybody. Hi. 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 This is like the Brady Bunch on crack right here. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't know who Jan is and all that and uh, who little C Cindy is, but uh, <laughs> we'll get around to that. But you know, you guys, I mean, I first just want to acknowledge you for having been brave enough. So let's start there. What 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 happened for you when you read or you saw the Facebook Live? or you watched my video somewhere where I said, I'm creating a book and I want people who have a real story to tell, who are willing to tell the story about something in their life or someone else's life, about a very difficult time they went through and how they got through the other side. What was the call inside of you? Marilee, I wanna start with you. <laughs> oh gosh, okay, so start with me. What was the call? You know what, it's the perfect opportunity to lay the foundation to where my message started. So, you know, everything is whatever the question, love is the answer. And if you put me to the test, I'll show you the way. And so what this book does is tell you, you know, yeah, I've been through my stuff. And at each test, I've had to apply love and believe in it. And the outcome was phenomenal. Mm, thank you. And how about you, Spike? Basically, for me, it was meeting you at a uh, media podcast and seeing how honest and fresh you were. And so I realized if I'm teaching CEOs and business leaders how to tell story and, and move their businesses to greater profits, then I'd better get on the same bandwagon and tell my own <laughs> story. So, and I did have a story to tell, and, and that's what's come out in the, in the book. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Kim, how about you? What was the call that brought you here? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I think it was just that it was so, my story is really raw and I've never, my, my business and my life calling has just taken off since this event happened that I wrote about. And I just, I've never actually, I don't know, something about your, the way you presented it. I went, wow, I have to finally tell everyone how this all began you know where i really it's not that i haven't been doing my calling for mo most of my adult life but something about this event just made it take off and and i 
it just felt really, you know, called to tell the story of where it all started. Oh my God. So yeah. I love the theme that's coming out here because uh, before we go on, I just have to reflect and say, you know, that's really saying something, what you're hearing here. And I hope there's an inspiration right there. It's true, right? Uh, we're called, dreams are expensive. Dreams <laughs> and visions are bigger than we are always. And we don't know what we don't know. But the only thing we know is that there's something in our belly or wherever it is, you feel it in your body. That's a hell yes. And the moment you allow that hell yes to guide you forward, then everything that's magical and miraculous will unfold. It really is being presented to you for great reason. If you'll step into it, I say, screw fake it till you make it, right? Does it like it's, forget it. I hate that saying. Here's the deal. Step into who your future self already is. So when you get that calling, it's your future self saying, here I am, I'm leading you here, let's go. Those who resist and stay behind and machinate and try to figure out, I can't because of this and I can't because of that, and I'm so worried, and I'm so anxious, and blah, you really <laughs> destroy the energy. Like it has to be almost with the innocence of a child to move forward. And it is, there's a reason why they call it blind faith, right? <laughs> you're really moving forward, maybe in spite of whatever you're thinking in your head. So kudos to the authors. I want to keep going, but I had to reflect on how powerful that is right there. And Curry, what about you, my dear? What was the calling that made you feel like, I have to be part of this book? Well, the calling was you. Can you hear me, Debbie? I hear you great. Okay. The you calling was you. Really you, because when I met you many years ago, uh, it was in Access Consciousness classes, and I was working so steadily on coming out of my own tragedy, mm. coming out of my own, I would say, I guess, machinations of like, <laughs> ah, you know, who am I and what do I choose to be in the world? And when you reached out to me with this, I actually have my book finally after five years ish, six years in the formatting stage and you reached out to me and I went, oh my gosh, the universe has my back. This is my first action for me to be honest and say, okay, here I am. So I'm just getting started and I'm so grateful, Debbie, that you reached out to me. And even though I've been doing smaller classes all over the world, teaching and facilitating people to be them, I needed to facilitate myself and you were the beginning for me to help facilitate myself. Mm. Mm. Woo and see, that's another very cool thing. Seeds can be planted years earlier and you never know. And Curry and I have known each other for, uh, I don't know, seven years, I'm thinking. So yeah, you just never know where a relationship is going to lead and how you can help each other up, give each other a hand. Erica, how about you? What called you to this book? Hi. Uh, well, it was you again. It's lot, uh, the others, same thing. It was you, Debbie. I, I met you at a small little speaking engagement and, and I saw you and I just knew that this was something I had to do. I'm an infant in the whole consulting world and as with others, leading other executives and telling their story. And I'm brand new at this, and, but I have gone through so much in my own life. I just said, I'm going to be authentic from the start and I'm going to tell my story from the start. And of course, Debbie facilitated that and, uh, and I was just ready. I was ready to say what I had to say and, and you gave us that opportunity and it was just, again, I've heard it through the others, the universe has your back, everything aligned perfectly and, and me just being able to have that platform through you, Debbie, has been absolutely phenomenal. As an aside, Erica is calling her consultant firm in its infancy but if i could just add they just landed a government contract so i did um, i don't know how baby it is but pretty damn impressive right i i am a little i am now a certified small business through the state of california so i am i am landing government contracts so it's just again but it's just everything you know when you're ready to be your authentic self as you have led all of us to be our authentic selves so many more doors just open Exactly. Right. And Brenda, darling, how are you from the UK? <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> what was, tell me, darling, what was your calling? What brought you here? 
Well, this is going to sound like a broken record, isn't it? Um, I'm going to say the same thing as other people. It was meeting you um, propelled me forward. But for years, I've been thinking I am actually fed up of actually just being un under the stone, you know, hiding beneath <laughs> the stone. I needed to get, you know, get out, just push the stone out of the way and get out there and share my message because a lot of people had been telling me, you know, how much I inspire them, how much I motivate them, how much I'm out there for everybody. And, and my previous profession was very much about giving. You know, I was in social work for a long time. So I've only been in coaching full time, that is for the last three years. And something just propelled me, you know, to really, really just, you know, be visible. You've got nothing to lose, share your message. And, and, and I know that I want to share my story. If I just inspire one person to take that first step, I mean, you know, there is a saying, isn't there, that, you know, a, the journey of a thousand miles starts with just that single step. If you just manage to take that single step, you're off. Off, you, you take off. And I feel now I've got, you know, the wind beneath my wings. And I, I <laughs> want, I'm ready. I'm ready to share my story. And that's what brought me to this, you know, to this book. And, and knowing that I'll be safe in your, in your, in your hands and you coordinate us, you, you know, and you just pushed me even when it felt that I was getting out of my comfort zone, which is a good thing in some way. Mm -hmm. I agree. It really is. It's okay to go where you've never gone before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So really yeah. you. And Jenna, hi, great to have you here. What was your calling that caused you to want to step forward and participate and write a chapter? Okay, maybe we lost Jenna. All right, um, so I'm going to move forward. Keisha, hi. Hi, Debbie. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so for me, it was actually a referral from my intuitive advisor, and she sent me your video. And she's like, you should take a look at this video. And I, as soon as I saw you on the video, I felt instant connection. I was like, all right. <laughs> She's going to help me birth so many things into, you know, that I've been manifesting from years. Exactly what you said. It's all about planting the seed. And many of these seeds for me have been planted about five, six, seven years ago. And now everything is coming into fruition. And I just, like I said, I felt that connection and it was like, yep, this is it. You are the person. <laughs> <laughs> Man, at least I hope you're getting goosies like I am. I'm like, I'm on fire to speak to everybody. This is like inspirational talk fest here. Great. <laughs> Sally, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's so awesome to have you. And let's unmute you and have you share what was your calling? Well, I saw you at two conferences in a row last year. And the first one I told us to write a book. And I knew I had a book in me. And I didn't feel like I was quite ready. So when I got your email about this, I'm like, this is it. This is my beginning. And I had this story that I've wanted to tell. And it's taken me time to get to the place where I was really ready to do it. So everything just aligned. So here I am. <laughs> That's uh, such an amazing reason why to do this. And I'm glad Sally talked about it. So the listeners, viewers know that there are many people out there who want to write a book and the statistics are not good. 85% of people who want to write a book never will. And then there's even a percentage out of that, the ones who quote unquote are going to move forward and they'll start the book and they'll never finish it. So I got to tell you, like get a book writing coach, do something that's going to create accountability. So you move forward and create that dream. And why that was important too, is because often it's, for some people, not everybody, but for some people, the idea of taking on a full book is too much. A, it may not be their calling, or B, it just may be too big, right? You don't need the whole buffet, but maybe you just need a platter. And often doing a chapter gives you a lot of view and experience of how to do this and a lot of confidence that you got this. So it's a great reason to do that. And I love that she brought it up also because because of this book and because of one of the participants who's not here today, who was in the military, he approached me and said, I want to do a book for vets 
next year, early next year, we're starting in January, it's gonna be anthology for veterans. So if anybody's been in the military or has had family in the military and has a story to tell, you can go to this website, debbyd.net slash anthology. It's D-E-B-B-I dot, no, what is my name? D-E-B-B-I <laughs> dot net slash anthology. And you'll see everything there. Of course, you can also email dare to dream radio at gmail.com if you're interested in doing a chapter. So that's going to be very exciting. And, you know, the right things always come, always come in the right time. And I think the only person we have not gotten, if I'm correct at this point, is Jenna. Okay, Jenna, we're ready for you, girl. <laughs> okay, we can't hear her. Now, you're not muted here. So I think you're muted somewhere. Ah, it's on your cell phone. Now you're good to go. <laughs> I love it. That actually is a great intro for what I wanted to share. <laughs> Give an opportunity to laugh um, and make something really positive out of a tough situation, you know, which is what we're all talking about. So yeah, I was a clear yes before you even asked, really, Debbie. I was a yes before you even asked. Um, you and I had gone through a year-long personal and professional development program together, um, led by Marsha Weeder, also a mystery school, which was really an amazing experience. And I saw how powerful the work that you're doing is, and I saw you turn her book into a bestseller while we were in that program and I was like someday I am working with that woman and I just didn't know what it was going to be and I didn't know what the book was going to be that I was going to be writing exactly but I really had a strong intention to work with you in capacity at some point so I'm really grateful for that and then coming back to the the hardship pieces you know I I went through tremendous I've been going through tremendous losses one after the other really in the last five years. And it's been really tough to talk about and to find ways to feel safe to express it and also to feel heard. Um, so this has been an opportunity for me to find my voice through that and also to recognize that through the losses have come great gains, have come great rewards. And the losses that I've endured um, have really turned my life around in many very positive ways. And I've created this comedy career for myself that has come from, you know, saying, I have nothing else to lose and I'm gonna do this in the name of, you know, the people who can't, who can no longer do it, you know, who are specifically my parents, um, who both had comedians in them. And now I'm doing stand-up comedy and, uh, so I'm super grateful for this opportunity and really honored to be with this incredible group of people and what a wonderful adventure to be on. So thank you so much for this opportunity, Debbie. Appreciate oh, that's it. That's great. Well, thank you for your bravery. I appreciate that. It's deep. It's deep. It's deep. Uh, oh, goody. Jeff Jones is here. We've got another male in the house. Hey, Jeff, <laughs> we're already started here and I'm so glad you're here to represent the testosterone part of the book. <laughs> And uh, uh, we're just, I'm going to fit you in right here, which is what happened? Uh, how did you hear the call for this anthology and what inside you, what was the heart song that connected you to the call to write a chapter that said, I, I need to be a part of this book? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the title, really, the title, I Am Still Here really, really touched me because, you know, I am still here. What I thought about was the journey and, you know, having been through quite a bit and, and, and still being connected to that journey. And I, you know, right away, just when I read that, was raising my hand inside. <laughs> I think it's interesting when you are putting something out into the world, and I'm sure I'd love to hear from entrepreneurs, so anyone who's listening and watching, feel free to write comments or send them in. But I do think it's very interesting when you're putting something out in the world to watch how people navigate that. There are definitely that contingency of people who hear 
I'm offering this and almost before you're done, they're already on the landing page buy. <laughs> and that's like so cool, right? And I can point some of you out who were that. You were like, all right, where I go, do, 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 do. <laughs> right there are other people who take time they're digesters right they have to hear the information and go away and and consider it and then come back and they're actually usually a hell yes so i gotta just tell you i'm a digester right i i am somebody um, i'm even that way if you're gonna say you know something happened the other night how did you feel I don't know that I'll know, but I can go away and come back and like have a lot of clarity. So this is so cool because that when you're an entrepreneur putting stuff out in the world, I think you have to have a lot of a wide berth for everybody and the way they choose to make choices that the, the right ones will all come around, but they do it in different ways and in different timelines, as long as they get in before, before the deal is uh, closing, of course. So, I just honor all of you for finding your way to this book and for doing the work. You know, it's crazy to have started out together back in August. Here we are in December and it's like, you've done it, right? You've done it. The rest is just me launching and you sitting back and, you know, with a champagne and cigars and, and caviar and having a great time on launch day and celebrating yourself. So, I, I guess what I'd like to know, we can really popcorn this and people can just, you know, sort of raise your hand or just speak out. I know it'll be perfect. How do you hope that this book is going to impact readers? What are you hoping that it's going to do? Hi, and hi I'd like to share. <laughs> um, so for those of you who are listening, honestly, this book, it's all about getting uncomfortable. It's all about being your authentic self and saying, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being my authentic self and to be able to share that with others, no matter what judgments or what the judgments that we sometimes think that others may have when it comes to ourselves. Because really and truly at the end of the day, the judgments are just a reflection of them and not you. So yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. We're going to come back and get more feedback from the authors on this. Why, why read this book? Why to go to Amazon and get I Am Still Here? I would suggest that um, you take, take stock of this first. You're listening to Dare to Dream podcast and TV. Go to Debbie Dashinger and get my free gift to you. It's a report information for your being your business and your book and it's called publicity how to become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media so d-e-b-b-i-d-a-c-h-i-n-g-e-r go there and get your free report and if you're just tuning in to the show or just watching the show this is debbie dashinger dare to dream and i'm interviewing the amazing authors from i am still here trials turn into transformation it's an international bestseller and it's available on amazon get your ebook or a print book today so let's keep going and you don't really have to raise your hands although that was kind of cute i liked it <laughs> stop for it and say like what, why? Why would you even, why would you give this out as a gift for a birthday, for just because, for a holiday? Why would you tell your friends and family and database, like, really, you ought to read this? What are they, they going to get from it? I know for me personally, I, there's a side of my story that people don't really know unless you are literally my best friend or my, my, my parents. So and um, people, there's a handful of people that know my story and the greater circle, you know, the people that you interact with and network, they don't know the whole, they don't know the other side of Erica. They see the, the happy networking. Let's, you know, let's talk about business and all of this, you know, all the time. And but they don't know that there was a moment where Erica didn't think she was going to pull through. So there's uh, that hope of giving others, again, that hope. You know, that while my story is not all that unique, that others do go through it and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Hmm. It's so powerful. The labels that we put on people and the suppositions that are completely erroneous. Mm -hmm. I go mm -hmm. to every three to four months, there's a, this amazing party that was created by this couple, specifically grassroots to help people and planet. 
And the most talented people get up, they sing, they tell poetry beyond the beyonds, they <laughs> speak about stuff that is just like, I mean, they're amazing people. They're being interviewed by the New York Times and so forth, and we're so lucky to be in their company. And one of the things that blows me away the most is when you see somebody, and no matter what it is you thought, just by looking at someone and how they look, that you, that you knew about them is when they start lowering the barrier and pulling back the curtain and sharing like for real, whoa. And the stories that come out, it's like, you know, it makes you just so compassionate. It's a level playing field out here on the planet. There's a lot of people in humanity going through a lot of stuff and you don't know what you don't know. So please don't judge each other, you know? I, and I wanna say just uh, as an aside, like 10 years ago, uh, I used to do a, workshop I'm not gonna mention it. it doesn't matter I used to do this big workshop I did it every year for 10 years I went constantly um, and it's not access curry it's it's completely <laughs> so don't worry but you know there was a, a bunch of us used to get together there was a, a fellow uh, who was gay and I thought he was so funny and I really liked him and I always wanted to be friends with him and he was sort of part of this crowd I hung out with but every time we went somewhere he was so cold to me and I could, you know, at some point you just go, I don't know, you just can't figure out what the hell. So I just stopped trying and I just connected with who I was connected with. And years later, they were showing a video that they had distributed uh, worldwide. And it was people talking about this workshop. I'm somebody who had been interviewed for it. Little did I know that out of like the tens of thousands of people involved in this outfit, they were going to choose my interview to be the feature. And I mean, this thing went out all over the world. I, I, it was strangely a star, like I was a speaker for them. And I really wasn't. I was just being genuine. Um, but it, well, the point is it really elevated my visibility in a very unexpected way and identified me immediately with people. Well, one day we were doing work in this workshop specifically on labels and what we put on people didn't even belong to them, belonged to us, but we put on people and then we viewed them and interacted with them literally through that filter. And we were taking a break and I was walking through because it's giant, there's probably 5,000 people who attend. And he came right up to me and said, I owe you the biggest apology. And I said, really, why is that? And he said, you know, for years, I put a label on you and I said, she's just like Pamela Anderson. And I had a lot of judgments about who and what Pamela Anderson was. And so I related to you through that filter and I've been treating you really poorly because of my judgment of her, my judgment of that label, and then sticking it on you. And I, not only all these years have you shown me something completely different, but then seeing this video just now, like I'm embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much for telling me. Because I never understood what was going on. And it was so strange, you know. So then I stuck my boobs out in my blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting image. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go there. <laughs> you know? But it is so powerful what we do. And so I really love what Erica just said because it speaks to that. You know, she's out in the world as a beautiful woman, as a professional as a young Latina, <laughs> da, 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 representing, and like nobody would know. So you gotta buy the book to find out her story, <laughs> right? What she right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's right, there's a full human in there. Feel there the is, she's, she's not a machine, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who else wants to say why this book? What are people gonna get out of it? Curry, I gotta go to you, I feel you right now. Well, I am so in agreement with Erica because the life I've lived has been kind of out in front of a lot of people. You know, I've been front page news and a terrible lawsuit, et cetera, et cetera. And I have kind of kept my own personal life guarded. And what I share is some of the real difficult times I had being a single mom. And I actually didn't realize that that was something that could connect with people. And I'm really grateful that I've walked into a time in my life, you know, when you become 60, all of a sudden, 
what other people think isn't quite as important anymore. <laughs> I'm so grateful for the <laughs> And I'm grateful for you, Debbie. And so, you know, exposing the really tough times and I'm still here and just wait for the next 10, 20, 30. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Awesome. That's right. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, Mark, welcome. It's so great you could join us. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, I got to thinking about um, when I wrote the piece about, you know, my life and kind of what what's happened so far, I thought, you know, the hardest thing I think we have to do sometimes is just being truly authentic and just honestly just sharing everything from the heart, no matter what somebody thinks or feels about it, but sharing it from your heart because that's where, for me, the real connections are found. And I've noticed as I network, um, you know, we have the past to think of but we also can be hopeful for the future. And I think by writing what we did here, we've provided that link for others to connect that way so they have hope for their futures by seeing some of you know, the things that have happened to some of the authors as well as, and then, and then also to be grateful for the opportunity to share it in such the way that we have. So I'm, I'm just really thankful to be a part of this and to really, feel like I was able to share my authentic self um, in, a, in a short paragraph that really defines, you know, what it means to me, as well as I hope that there's that same um, desire for others to, to make that connection with others to their own authentic self. So. I've had the really good fortune of reading everybody's story of reading the book from cover to finish. And I can promise you that I was incredibly moved and uh, somewhat awestruck learning about everybody and amazed at how you could gather 13 people and without asking, each one completely different stories. I mean, so awesomely <laughs> different, right? And points of view and stuff. And I mean, it's just like this a beautiful weaving of a tapestry of inspiration. So I can promise you, I, I spent like a weekend just sitting there and reading. That's what I love about anthologies too. You can do a chapter and put it down and digest and put, read a chapter and digest. So yeah, I really love all of you. And e as each of you are sharing, I know intimately what you're talking about. So it's very exciting. And who else wants to say why this book? Like, why would you give it to somebody? What was the element or piece that you feel, you know, would really be meaningful to people out in the world or really serve them? Maybe the spy I'd like to share that. What was that? Me, we got two at once. Sorry. Oh, okay, I'll go. <laughs> for, for me, it was basically sometimes you might have to get out of your own way. You know, things happen to us for a reason. Um, I had four or five different major things go wrong in about less than 100 days. And from there, I had to find a way to come back. And I still think that that whole journey is still being challenged and put in front of you. But what it did do is then change my concept of practice. And when you start to practice what you want to achieve and the skill sets that have to come along with that, then the successes that you'll get, they, they just grow and they continue to grow for the rest of your life. And that's what a lot of people are after are after success. But it's really the, the changing of themselves to meet that success. Spike, so tell everybody how early you get up every morning and, and very quickly, what do you do each morning? I get up at five o'clock each morning. Um, from there, I go through a ritual. I call it my divine nine. Uh, it's a process of meditation, exercises, visualizations and stepping on rocks and all that sort of stuff you, you see people do. Then I walk down the beach. I normally hit the beach between six and five past six and I'll walk nine to 10,000 steps. And I have, um, I, when I was practicing my TED talk and all the other stage talks that I do, I practice them in various um, guises, different modes, all those steps. So I'm on the beach, I'm the guy waving his arms around, talking, <laughs> sometimes screaming, sometimes whispering, sometimes being angry and mad. And they go, oh, no, there's enough, enough. <laughs> 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 but, 
<laughs> what that's done for me is that's put me on stages with you know people like Bo Eason, met people like Deb. Uh, it's given me a TED Talk already, uh, an Amazon number one bestseller, and that was in less than 18 months. And, and please you know, mention how much weight you lost. Oh, all right, 44 um, pounds. It's so freaking awesome. And by so what he, so what he's saying is that's as a re, as a result of the trial he went through, and the new choices he made once he was somewhat like totally on the other side. And uh, Brenda, I want to go over to you. Speaking of weight, how much weight have you lost? Please let us know. And that was part of your journey too. Like I just I knew you were going to come to me after that. I just felt it. <laughs> Oh dear, I've lost, um, I lost um, almost six stones, uh, just under 90 pounds in uh, five months. What? Basically, something wow. similar really. The, and I, I experienced so much loss. Uh, my parents, my two, two middle sisters, and, um, and then I, I was seriously ill and all happened in a very short period of time. And I was working in a very toxic um, environment as well. But particularly, I think the, the last thing that, tip, that almost tipped me over the edge is that I, I almost, um, I, well, I, I wouldn't be here. I'm still here because I nearly wasn't here. Mm -hmm. And that event really just propelled me to realize that um, if, I didn't, if I didn't kind of listen to myself, to the voice and and really do some mindset work um, and, and listen to what the, the messages from the universe about what, what my life purpose was about, then there would be no point in still be, you know, in, no, in, no, in being here. And basically I started walking, I started power walking. I healed myself through power walking. And, uh, and Spike, it's a pity that we're not in the same country because I could meet you down the beach. Because unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have the luxury of a beach. I'm out, I wake up three o'clock in the morning. By four o'clock, I've done all my affirmations. I've done my pilates inside the house. And as soon as it's like London, unfortunately, it's not like California or wherever you are. We don't have sun, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> he's so, from Australia, but he lives in New Zealand. We don't oh, have that, that cool point, an accent. The point <laughs> is, he's got more sun than me. But you know, you, sorry, Spike, different parts of the globe. Sorry, the different end of the globe. But I do everything that you, you know, Spike was talking about. I'm also waving, and I practice whatever it is I'm practicing about, mm. and I communicate with nature. I talk to trees, so. I do all of that in a park, you know, a national, very green, very leafy park. I do all of, and I tell you, I found the strength, the inner strength, the real, the kind of tremendous mindset transformation through that kind of work with myself, nobody but myself in my head. And like, I don't know who said, somebody else said earlier, get out of your own way because I was fantastic. <laughs> I had an MBA in being in my own way. You know, I would, I, 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 I got a prediction for it because then I was in my own way and, and I suffered. You know, I just had one thing after another and I realized that it's because I was, I was pushing upstream, you know, don't push the river. It does not need, it doesn't need pushing, you know. <laughs> it, 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 does it? It doesn't. It doesn't ask you to, you know, don't push the river. Just flow, go with the flow. And as soon as I, be, as soon as I began to do that, weight loss, I had been, I had been um, a star dieter. You know, you name a diet, you know, I'd done it, you know, when I was younger. And I never would actually sustain the weight loss. As soon as I got out of my own way, I've lost, I lost the weight two years ago. I'm still the same weight that, you know, everybody's just, my own sister didn't recognize me, you know, at the airport when I came back. And she just looked at me and she, you know, she was going to go past, I had to hug her and say, it's your sister, <laughs> you know, hello, hello. <laughs> so yeah, I get out of your own way. And uh, really, and I think this book that is for me, this is the one message from this book that you know, everybody is on the same journey. We just happen to be at, the, at different
different stages of that journey. We are, we are on the journey to transformation. We are on the journey to actually be, you know, be aligned with our life purpose. As soon as you align with your life purpose, once you actually stop trying to, to do things that are not in alignment with who you are, your authentic self, everything becomes a lot easier everything you know it's it, things just become a lot easier things that used to take me i don't know a whole day to do i do them in an hour now and people just look at me wow well, come you got all this energy this stamina this vitality what are you taking people tell, ask me what vitamins do you take and i say the same ones that i've been everybody takes nothing you know not much yeah i think you take yes vitamins brenda because when people read your story and they realize like she was completely incapacitated like she was told she'll never walk again i was yes. so when she says oh i'm walking in the park and i wake up at 4 a.m and me and spike are doing a boot camp together she could have been a total victim to her circumstances but you know the beauty is and i'll give them another little secret about your story is that you knew you actually knew the truth before you did what you did in surgery so it's also a story about not listening to your intuition but then no matter what happened your hell yes to life and to yourself and creating Absolutely. what you preferred instead so who else who else has not yet gone to answer this question and let's popcorn through this I, i'll speak break. up i'll speak up this is kim Thank and you. I, you know, I guess I'm feeling impelled to speak up because my story was really about um, almost ending my life when I lost my spouse um, to cancer after 20 years um, being together. And I, I don't know what it, I just, I'm feeling really impelled and I felt impelled to write this story for people who are going through tremendous grief um, and, and that just the message that you you will get through it you will never forget your beloved or or you know if, if you've lost someone and you felt like going with that person um but there's something that happens when like you're saying you say hell yes to life and it's it's like you are being moved on this river to get through that depth of sorrow and grief and i i i really um I felt impelled because for those of the people out there are, who are going through that amount of grief, just to give the message that you will get through it. I mean, so that, that's really the main thing I wanted to put forth. And gosh, I don't even recognize the person that I was even in that relationship. It's interesting. Wow. Um, I have done so much transformation and I don't know how it's come about, mm. but I think it's just like everyone's saying, like Brenda was just sharing. It's just like you put one foot in front of the other, you say, hell yes. And you just, it just happens. So mm. I, I guess it's a, a really a message of hope. Thank yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, I haven't said anything, Debbie. Go for it. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, um, to that, I, I listened to all of your stories and I'm so humbled by them. You know, and I think to myself, wow, I can't wait. I can't wait to read them all. So, you know, so the question is, why would anybody want to read this book? After watching this video, it's like, why wouldn't you want to read this book? I want to read everybody's story. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm, I literally am so humbled by it. And one of the things for me is it takes a lot of courage to write your own story because you know you're going to be judged by the people who know you because your story is your story. It's your perspective, how you saw it, how you lived through it, what your frame of mind was while you were going through it. So other people, the onlookers who know you when you were going through it have a different perspective maybe. You know, they might be like, oh, she's just saying that. It wasn't like that, you know? And, and so the courage is, yeah, it's my story. To this, tell your truth. This is, this is yeah. my truth, right? This is my truth. It may not be your truth, but I lived it. Totally. So that takes a lot of courage for all of us to come out and say, this, this is my truth. And, you know, now it's out there and I can't retract it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody knows. 
So thank you, Debbie, for that. Oh my God, thank you. I have so much to say. Right now, but I just want you guys to go and say your piece because I'm woof, really resonating here. Who hasn't shared yet? Please uh, speak up, Louise. Sing out, Louise. <laughs> And uh, Jenna, you're probably trying to talk. I had to mute you because wherever you are got very loud. So I'll unmute you. And please let us know what, what, why should people pick up this book? We already heard, why wouldn't you? Like, exactly. Like, after hearing <laughs> you curious, who's not curious, what, what else? Why is this book magical? Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, I, I agree so much with what so many people are saying here and appreciate Kim's vulnerability and Sorry, where I am is a noisy place. I was trying to go to a quieter spot, but it's still a little bit noisy where I am. Um, you know, there, I think in in our world today, there's so much information that we get that's really filtered through social media and through the space that we're wanting to present. And the truth is that we are all going through something. We are all suffering through something that uh, may be intolerable or seem to be unlivable you know and and that has been my experience as well that's like i don't know if i'm going to live through this i genuinely don't know um and so to both get that hope that you're going to survive and that things will get better it's really a spiritual journey in a lot of ways to be able to create that kind of space while holding hands with um, all of these magnificent and really exceptional human beings that have been through their own version of human suffering, survived it, and come to a better place on the other side. And now, in many ways, we can make light of it and enjoy our lives. And not only did we survive, but we're thriving and having a great time and enjoying one another and going deep going deep into the truth of it we are going deep into the truth of it going deep into who we really are and and releasing you know some of what we would have is how we would most like to be seen but rather to say like this is my insides and really only my best friends know about this but you can have the opportunity reading this book to really get um intimate with some human beings who are who are triumphant and brave and um willing to share really authentically yeah inspiring uh, totally inspiring and i love what you just brought up man what a good point you know social media <laughs> it's the world of look at me selfie Ta -ta. you know my life is great eating tacos went to japan <laughs> And everybody's sitting back and going, man, does my life suck. <laughs> you know, I have a right. friend. Um, she's been married quite some time. She's adorable. I love her husband. But, you know, they have problems sometimes. They're great together, but they also have problems sometimes. And her thing with social media is she sees the posts people make about, uh, let's say my somebody's husband has a birthday and it's like oh my beloved you've changed my life I would be nowhere without you you complete me you know the day I met you blah 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 <laughs> the, the boy does it to the girl the girl does it to the girl the girl does it to the girl the boy does it to the boy whatever the partnership is and she's been sitting back going I don't have that I don't have that I'm like mama it's social media <laughs> it's all hype anyway you know and it's so easy today to like have that disparity and then my god if you're going through real life circumstances and having real life feelings it's like it's true like you want to stick it with your inner circle that you know has your back and you can nest in because outside of that it can be uncomfortable i totally relate to what you're saying and i think it's actually a phenom that is everywhere right now so more uh, karma points, a million karma points to all of you for superseding that <laughs> and still telling your story and moving forward. There. So it now I think we still have Sally and Jeff to share. So Sally, how about you? Why, why this book? Why now? Well, this is a story that I've never really gotten to tell because everyone else has told me their side of it, but it was so... It, it was a very tender place for me for a long time. 
And I had to go through a lot of barriers in my life to be able to really freely express it. Mm. So for me, this has been amazing to hear all the other authors because I resonate with a different part of each person's, what, what they're saying and what their challenge was. But I think for me, what this book offers is for people who are in a struggle and don't see the hope, don't see a positive outcome, don't know what to do next. These stories will inspire them to have the courage to see it through, to know that all they have to do is keep hoping and stay on their journey of hope and they will get through it and they will be stronger than they were before they begin whatever struggle they're going through, whatever their challenges. If you stay in it with hope and love, you get stronger. Yeah, it's like the choice to just do one more day, even yes. to total suckage. Or even <laughs> one more minute. Even <laughs> or, one more or one minute. more thing, one tiny little thing. When it's overwhelming, just stay with it and believe there's hope to just do that thing and then look at the next step. And that can be so powerful when you're trying to get through something really tough. And I think it helps to know that you're not alone and other people have been through big challenges and you can make it. Yeah. We all need that encouragement from each other now and then. And I think this book is an amazing place to get that. So I think it will really touch a lot of people and inspire a lot of people. Mm. So for that reason, I think it's a great book for everybody. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Here, here. And Jeff, how about you? Why this book? Why now? Yeah, so great question. <clears throat> the first thing I thought of with this book is it allows people to look through a new lens mm. and the stories that they're reading and they identify with, they have the opportunity to see how someone else dealt with a problem perhaps similar to what they're going through. And I, I mean, myself, what I think of is this thing that I've been stuck in for many times. I'm not the on, only one, but it, it, it's kind of like the belief systems from the past and out of that comes my thinking and and that drives my behavior. And then I have feelings about my life situation that go back and reinforce this old belief system. And so I, I, and I think everybody has probably done this circular round and round kind of thing. And for me, the reason why to read this book is to see how different people got out of that cycle for themselves. What are the factors? Mm -hmm. That's true. Has everybody gone? Uh, Debbie, I'd like to add one more factor why now and why this book. Are you going to no lose another 40 pounds? No, well, it can do. <laughs> but, uh, but he looks no, but, great, trust me. But it, um, it, it actually comes down to, together with the positiveness that you've actually put towards the people in the book and your own growth and where you've been to actually guide us along that path. And it's really something that's come out throughout all these videos and chats. So I think we should all give you a big hand as well, because I don't think it'll be as big a success if we had someone different that uh, yeah. didn't have the positiveness and the outlook that you do. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. <laughs> Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's been a pleasure working with you, Debbie. Thank you. Oh, awesome. oh my God. Thank you. That's very kind. I really appreciate it. I want to echo a lot of what I've heard here and just say that uh, for the listeners, for the viewers, that I came into this just merely to hold a container for authors. And the interesting thing is that this was completely inspired by something that almost wiped me out. Not quite two years ago, about three months shy of two years ago. And I literally landed and said, I cannot believe I'm still alive. I cannot believe that I'm still here. Like that's all I could think is like, I am still here. So a lot of what you heard is, was so true for me that I went through um, just the worst breakup. Like I wouldn't wish it on anybody. 
and it slayed every area of my life. You know, and you, when one goes through that, you give me something, God, give me something to hang out, like a, a rope, a, you know, send me a vest. <laughs> the, the choppy waters are taking me down. <laughs> and like, that was not going to happen. Like seriously, clients, money, where to live, every, my health, and the ending of that relationship ripped open an original wound for me that although I've done a tremendous amount of healing work, I mean, this got so core and it was terrifying for me to take on because the bottom line was abandonment and can I take care of myself? And I never believed any of those. So I had to step up to the plate, but I mean, to do so with all those other factors going on, it was dark. And I didn't want to be here. I totally didn't want to be here. So the interesting thing is I came just as a container for everyone else. I went to write the intro thinking, oh, you know, welcome to the book sort of thing. <laughs> and like spirit had something else in mind. <laughs> I mean, my story just started rolling out of me and it surprised me so much. But I thought, wow, I guess this is, this is really momentous for all of us. Like I have to also say, this was the truth of that time for me. And I so relate to this because today I feel so much joy. I feel so happy. I wait, I was going to bed last night, like giggling to myself, just me and my dog in bed and I'm happy. you know. <laughs> and there's so much to look forward to. I have such an amazing tribe that loves me. I, God didn't give me all those things for seven months, but what God, God is all that is gave me was healers tons of healers you can't imagine people coming up to me in the middle of workshops and saying I don't really know you and I don't know why but I, I'm just hearing I have to gift you with like three months of services I'm like okay I receive <laughs> and like that sometimes overlapping or one one healer would leave and a whole nother potent healer would come in and I sat back and went okay I am loved you do see me you do know okay I get it. I have to let go of work. I have to let go of money. Oh my God, this is so scary. And take care of myself. So it was such a journey for me as well. And the, the bottom line for me was, you know, and you can, it's so hard to tell someone while they're in it, like this sucks. This is so dark. This probably feels like it will never get better. How will you ever get out? How will your heart heal? How will you feel love again? How will you feel hopeful? How will you wake up and want to be here or feel joy and not have that cloud always over you? But man, it's so true when they say time heals all things. You put that one foot in front of the other and it's just amazing the resilience that we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are tuning in, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream. This is the podcast and TV. I'm interviewing the I Am Still Here authors. The subtitle is Trials Turned Into Transformational. Transformation, it's an international bestseller available on Amazon. And I have a, a popcorn here and I literally would like to ask you for anywhere from one to three words and just shout them out each. This is Dare to Dream. So what are you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Where do you go from here? Give me some words. International speaker. Yep, bestseller. Bestselling author. International gut educator. Mm. Global thought leader. Mm. Global thought leader and international bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> Facilitating others in creating a new reality and creating a new earth and a new reality for everyone on it. Hmm. Dreamer of great hope, inspiration, and joy. But did you say dreamer of great inspiration and joy? Bringer of Bringer. Great, of great hope, inspiration, joy, transformational possibility. Awesome. Thank you. Wow. This is running a water. Sorry, David. Mm -hmm. Running water and solar, solar power for 
my parents' village in Africa. Mm, okay. I have two words. Sh shifting possibilities. Is that everyone? I have two bonus words. <laughs> okay, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and Ginsu knives. What is healing, it? Healing and heart. Healing and heart. Mm. It seems to me that love is the answer. Always. <sighs> Always. Mm -hmm. Love is the answer, healing heart. And, you know, for all of you, um, I hope that what you have chosen the steps you've taken to be so successful here that this is already done you know this is you just stepping into your future self that this is already like an of course and you just expanding enough to fill that new container because i see that truth easily and profoundly for all of you i want to thank you for being who you are i want to thank you for being courageous and courage means in spite of fear and courage is a french word by the way for heart so thank you for having the courage to step into your future self and write a chapter and really help those who are going to read i am still here because uh, for all of us together, holding hands, going through this, coming out the other side and helping the others to pull them up as well. It's like when you talk about possibilities, this is where you start. This is where you start really showing up for others. So it, it wasn't really for us, although it started out for us, but it became about you, the readers. And so this is our dedication and our book to you. So authors, thank you so much for joining me today and for your brilliance. Thank today you. on Dare to Dream. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. And I end with this quote from Oscar Wilde. Never love somebody who makes you feel ordinary. In the next weeks on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Jerry Sargent, Dr. Sue Mortar, Anita Morjani, and Vicki Gay. Tune in. These are huge transformation conversations in the coming weeks. If you'd like to subscribe to this YouTube channel, go to youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And again, your free publicity report, how to become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media is at debbiedashinger.com. I thank the sponsor for this show who helps you get your online platform to sell your online programs and make massive income. They are at thnk.cc slash Deb, share this link with people who you think need to see it and hear it. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, everyone.